welcome to my YouTube channel. So tonight um, I'm up at the Falkirk Wheel and I'm going to show you the Falkirk Wheel just now before it gets too dark. But where I am, uh, the Falkirk Wheel was built uh, or it was opened in 2002. But the design of the Falkirk Wheel was inspired by a double headed uh, Celtic axe. It was also inspired by the rib cage of a whale and it was also inspired by a propeller. So you, you can see some of the influences for those design inspirations that they used to design the bridge. What it is, is it's actually the only um, wheel lift in the world. And what it does is it takes the barges into that entrance. I don't know if you can see with my finger. There's a bay at the top, and as it rotates, it states level as it brings, as it takes the boat to the top, and then the boat sails away. Next boat comes in, it brings it down, it rotates down, and then it frees the boat. So the bridge was built here because there used to be 11 lock gates, and this is the most efficient way to do it. It's the only one in the world, so it's pretty spectacular. But what we're really here for tonight is for it being lit up. And when it's lit up, we should get some pretty special photographs. So I'm here with Willie, who's staying out of camera shot. So thanks to Gary from Light Paint in Scotland for reminding me that the Falkirk wheel's all lit up just now. Um, and another thing for Gary, so there's a, a YouTube channel called Light Paint in Scotland, and it was set up by Gary, Bruce and Jason. And go and have a look because it's really impressive what these guys do with light painting effects, but it is all in camera, and it's absolutely amazing to see. I've tried it a couple of times, I'm absolutely hopeless at it, but hopefully I'll get some sessions out with the guys and we can start to improve my light painting technique. But what we'll do is we'll move around. We're going to take some shots here of the barges in the foreground and the Falkirk wheel in the background. I'll move closer to the side of the, the water because as it gets darker, the reflections will become more prominent. And as usual, I'll share my images as we go along. So let's see where this journey takes us tonight. We're not waiting on any sunsets, we're just waiting on it getting dark. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how I compose this image. So at the moment, from what you can see, I've got my shutter speed at a hundredth of a second. I've got my aperture set at f2.8 and I've got ISO 640. But to see where I am, if I brighten that up, and what I've done is I've increased the ISO to 4000. But really what I want to do is I want to do that because I want to make sure I've got my focus. Now what I want is detail, as much detail in the image as I possibly can. So if I go back, I'll reduce my ISO to as low as I possibly can, even if it sits at 400 just now. Then what I'll do is I'll increase my shutter speed to a 15th of a second. And there you can see I've got quite a nice reflection on my ISO 200. I'm just increasing that shutter speed a wee bit more. And I actually forgot to put on the two second in timer. There you go. I'll just check that image, I'll zoom in, just to make sure we've got the light. Yep, that's really nice. So, the other thing I can do now is, if I look on the viewfinder, if I want to try and darken the sky a little bit more, all I need to do is reduce my ISO to ISO 125. I don't get the brightness in the foreground, but it lets you see the lights um, with the reflections in the water and it's exaggerating the saturation of the lights as well because it's just a wee bit more underexposed. So what we'll do now is I'll move down to the edge of the water and we'll see if we can get a wider view um, with real reflections in the water. Okay, so I'm, I've managed to come down to the edge of the water. I'm going to try and take a kind of water side on image. I've got an eighth of a second aperture at f2.8 and ISO 250. Now there's some grasses in front of me 
as you'll see at the base of the camera there's some reason so I'm not going to get a full reflection of the bridge from this viewpoint but to be fair there's not that many viewpoints because all the reeds and the grasses are overgrown here at the side but what I'll do is I'll take this shot and then we'll see how that comes out and then I'll share that with you but ideally what I'm looking for is I want to capture these reflections because the water's nice and still and I want to make sure that I capture the colours that are being emanated from the wheel as as vibrant as they pretend, as they possibly are. Um, what I might do is I might just adjust some of the settings and then we'll see how those images come out. So I've moved up to a higher um, elevation here. I've actually walked up to the first platform and there's two ponds beside me. But because we've got a challenge with the reeds being so tall and you're not getting a full reflection, what I'm trying to do is get a higher elevation and so that I'm trying to get as much of the reflection in the water as I possibly can. So I'm just going to take this shot. The thing is, we're having to continually change our settings because it is getting darker and darker. Um, I'm just going to make a quick adjustment. I've already focused in. So I'm now shooting at ISO 100. I'm still at f2.8 and um, a sixth of a second. And that's actually quite nice. It's really bringing up the colours of the lights and there's no clouds in the sky tonight with the clouds lifted about three o'clock today so we didn't quite get here for the sunset because it was a bit of a comedy of errors because we parked that side and you walk over a swing bridge and there's a sign that says the swing bridge shuts at eight o'clock then we went to the top to park and then it said that the car park shuts at 8 o'clock so we've had to park on the street and then walk in and then that way we don't get locked out so I'm going to move around again because I want to see if, we've, if we can get any kind of compositions with the boats um, using the boats as a leading line uh, towards the, the wheel. <laughs> microphone because the last time I was out well in grey we could hardly hear him so this is Willie and Willie's also in Stirling and Camera Club and Willie also wins a lot of competitions similar to Alan Grey uh -huh. but what Willie's going to do is I'm going to ask Willie what Willie does when he takes a photograph at this time of night for the bridge where it being illuminated just so we can hear how Willie would approach the shot so how what do you do when you first see a shot like that Willie? Well what? just Try a few settings to yeah. get. I'm actually at 10 seconds uh, f10. Are you? And it's been working not too bad. So I'm down uh, at f2.8 with an eighth of a second. So I should try and up my I'm f stop then. I'm 100. I'm ISO 100, yeah. Right, Pretty sure I'll, that's what I'm at. That's cool, I'll give that a wee shot and try it because yeah. same when I was with Alan, Alan taught me a wee trick with a polarizer uh, and how you brighten up the water so that yeah. was great. I've not got any wee tricks though. Sure. Ah but you've you've got a different f-stop, different setting, see that's really nice uh, and really vibrant. Right that's really cool. Just, uh, see how it goes. And what lens are you using? I've got the 24 to 105. Right. Cool. Uh, we're just going to change to my wide angle, 16 to 35 to see what else I can get in the picture there? And do you have the same problem as me with all the reeds? How you yeah, kind of get well, a reel? I was down there earlier and there was a bit, it was a bit clearer. Ah, right. 
So yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk up the top of the hill because Wally found a nice composition up there and I'll have a shot. And what I'll do is I'll play a bit with the f-stop as well. Well, it's just to see. Brilliant. All right, well, thanks. And then once we're finished here, we're going to walk to the top of the Falkirk wheel and hopefully we'll get some nice shots up the top of the wheel. We put up with this far too long Some people change when they grow top of the hill, I've turned the light on because it actually helps me with the spirit level in the camera. So up here, I'm using F11, so Willie, Willie's using F11 at the moment. I've had it on F16 because there's some pilot lights at the top of the wheel and I want wee starburst effects. So I've pushed up to F16, but that means that my shutter speed's now increased to 30 seconds. So what I'll do is I'll pull it back to F11 and I'll take a couple of shots with F11 and then I'll take another couple of shots with F2.8. So Wally asked me what's the difference between the F2.8 and the F11 settings. The difference for me is shutter speed. So where I'll have an eighth of a second shutter speed, Wally's going to have a 30 second, which is great when you've got a tripod. So I've got an F11 shot here. I'm just going to take one more and then what we'll do is we're going to walk up to the top of the Okay, so we've climbed to the top and you can see the top of the Falkirk wheel down there on the bottom right hand side. So I've had to change lenses, I've taken the wide angle lens off just because it was too, it was just far too wide, I couldn't get any zoom. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing in on full 70mm into the centre of the wheel. It's quite tricky. So there's also another reason for shooting at a higher f-stop and a faster shutter speed because what we realised is we were down there and I'm shooting at a 30 seconds with f-16 to get starbursts. I was kind of overexposing the shot because I wasn't getting the different colours that were showing up as the lights were changing. So it's worth noting, if anyone's coming here at night to take photographs, try and get the fastest shutter speed you possibly can with the lowest ISO, and then that way you'll be able to capture the different colours as they change uh, along the Falkirk wheel. So uh, what I've done here, I've reduced it to a second um, shutter speed, f2.8 and ISO 400. I focused in on the centre of the Falkirk wheel and that's a really nice image. So what we'll do is we're going to work our way up towards the wheel and we'll take shots as we go along and then if the rough castle tunnels lit up might change my lens to the 70 to 200 and then focus back and see if we can capture the tunnel all lit up.
Okay, so I've moved closer um, to the top of the, the wheel. I need to be really careful because the canal water is right immediately to my left hand side. So that wee LED panel I bought for the top of the camera is working really nicely and it's helping us out. So the light, we've got a, another challenge here, the, the rings, the colours changing in the rings continuously all the time. So I've had to speed up my shutter speed quite a bit so that I've had some long, long exposure settings and I'm just getting a, a wash and I'm not getting any individual colours. So what I've done is I've set it to a third of a second. I've set it to, but I'm back, to, I'm down to about f3.2 and I've got ISO 400 and I'm now able to capture the colours. I'm just going to put my hand over the viewfinder so that the, the light doesn't get leak into the image through the viewfinder. I'll take another couple of shots. And then what I'll do is I'll work my way inside the wheel and we'll turn the camera on when we're in the wheel. actually inside the first um, rib of the Falkirk wheel and as I look down it's actually really cool so we're getting all these turquoises and purples and magentas and reds and it's really really nice so I've had to really speed up my shutter speed because I'm really close so I'm at eighth of a second now I'm still at ISO 400 and I'm at uh, aperture f3.2 but as you'll see the colour starting to change continuously. I'm going to see if I can just reduce the ISO to darken it down a little bit and just see what impact that has. I'm just conscious that there's a potential a lot of light creeping in through the viewfinder because where I'm standing, I'm standing right next to the lights and there's a bit of an echo going on as well. But it's, it's quite like a kaleidoscope. So when you look through the rings, it just looks as though it's continuously swirling and for those of us that are young enough or old enough that remember Joe 90 it's no far away from the cage that Joe 90 used to sit in right so I'm just hoping that that blue ring's going to change colour because I've probably taken about three or four shots of that blue ring We've had a good night tonight, quite a surprise. We're probably having to wrap up early, it's 10 to 10, because we think the lights are going to be turned off. Um, have you enjoyed that, Willie? Well, it's been a great night, yeah. Really opportune, the clouds lifted, we only had a short period of time, so we managed to nip up. Thanks again to Gary, because we didn't realise the lights were on, and we were speaking to a nice couple there who said that, I think this might be a one-off tonight, so we've been really lucky. So we'll end the video here. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time we post a video. So thank you, and here's to the next video.